Hello, I'm Fran and you're watching a retouching tutorial for tipsquirrel.com. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to create dust particles in your images using the brush tool. I've got two images here, both of which have got some really, really nice lighting effects on them. But I think to make them look even better, I think we should add some dust particles to them, just to bring all of the image together to create a more dingy and dark feel to the images. So let's get started. So we're going to get a brand new layer. Make sure you're on the brush tool and you've got your foreground set to white and you're on a very, very low, low sized brush, maybe four or five. Click on the brush settings, then on brush tip shape, make sure spacing's ticked. I'm going to increase that quite a bit. Then we're going to go to shape dynamics and increase the size jitter. Add some angle jitter as well. Add a bit of roundness jitter. Increase the minimum roundness as well. Then scattering, I'm going to tick that and we're going to increase that all the way to a thousand percent. And count jitter as well, increase that. And then lastly, we're going to go on transfer and make sure opacity is at 100% and flow jitter is at 100% as well. So with our very small brushes, we're just going to paint some of this dust onto the light areas. Now if you do want to keep playing around with the settings, you can do. I'm just going to increase the spacing again, because it is all about trial and error. we all have different opinions of what looks good and what doesn't so I'm just going to add my dust here and again if you want to add a little bit or a lot it's up to you it's all about what looks good for you so I'm going to go for something like that I'm going to add a few larger particles as well. Maybe not that big actually. Let's go for maybe 10. 20 actually. Just add a few larger ones. Not too many though. Once you're happy with the particles in those sections within the light, we're going to go to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. I'm going to go for one or two pixels, click OK. And then I'm probably just going to reduce the opacity a little bit as well. Again, it's up to you by how much. I'm going to go for something like that. So let's move on to the next image here. Again brand new layer. Okay, so again, small brush. Make sure your spacing is at a thousand percent or however much you feel is needed. I'm going to go to shape dynamics and increase the size jitter, the angle jitter, a little bit of roundness. Scattering is going to be a thousand percent, count jitter hundred percent, Transfer 100% for opacity and 100% for flow jitter. And again, I'm going to paint where I want the particles to be. Once you're happy, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm going to add one or two pixels of blur and maybe reduce the opacity just a bit. So I'm going to add some foreground dust as well. I'm going to add a new layer, increase my brush just a bit and add some larger dust particles for the foreground. So 
So I'm going to go for something like that. I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And maybe I'll use like 10 pixels of blur, maybe more depending on your preference. Maybe go to like 15 or something like that. Click OK. I'm going to add a bit of motion blur as well. So filter, blur, motion blur. And probably go for something like that. Click OK. And I'm going to reduce the opacity by a lot. Maybe have 10% opacity or 15%. Um, 10 probably works best. Just so we can see those dust particles a little bit, but it's not very overpowering. And for this one, I may include a gradient map as well. If you do want to see a tutorial on how to create gradient maps, I did one last week, so go check that out. So there's one I made earlier. I'm going to choose maybe 25% on that just to give it a bit of grunge. So there we have before and after. Go back to the skater before and after. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It is very similar to the tutorial I did on how to create your own snow, but it's using the same techniques but creating dust particles in your images. If you do want to check out that video as well, there'll be a link in the description, as well as a tutorial I did last week on how to create a cinematic look in your images, which is obviously using the gradient map which I just did on this image. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to give it a like. I'd really, really appreciate it. If you do want to see more videos from me, I do produce weekly Photoshop tutorials. So don't forget to subscribe. It's absolutely free and you'll be notified about my latest content. Don't forget to check out tipsquirrel.com for the latest Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials. You can follow me on Instagram at PhotoshopFran and on Twitter at PhotoshopPro. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.